Hey everyone, God bless you. Well, I have a little antidote to share with you, some California crazy. Found out yesterday that uh, in January, our governor signed a bill, SB 132, authorizing uh, the staff of our state prisons to only use the pronouns uh, of the prisoners that they choose, their own gender pronouns. Uh, this law also requires uh, the prisons to house prisoners according to their own gender identity. So biological males who are now identifying as females can request to be housed in female prisons and that request must be honored and vice versa. What do you know? What a surprise since uh, January, since the bill was signed, 261 prisoners have asked to be reassigned to opposite biological sex housing units. No surprise of those 261, 255 are biological males uh, who are now identifying as women and want to be housed with the women. If I was a woman in the California state prison system right now, I would not be happy. Of the six that are biological women identifying as men that have asked to be moved from a woman's facility to a man's facility, uh, two of them have changed their minds <laughs> and will remain where they are. So I guess uh, what the law is saying is that you must respect uh, the gender identity of uh, any person and enforce that by housing them in the uh, sex specific housing that they identify with, but they're also free to change their minds. So imagine that you have a person who is a biological female who identifies as a man, you must respect that, but she's free at the same time to change her mind and to remain with the women. So if you're respecting her and you're considering her a man, you now have a man who have just decided to remain in the women's prison. Hmm. If that sounds completely upside down and as a, a clear expression of cultural insanity and a policy that has gone over the cliff of irrationality, you would be correct. My encouragement to you, dear ones, uh, is to remain faithful, to remain faithful. You know, there's a beautiful proverb that a king establishes stability for his nation by justice. Proverbs 29, I think verse four. And a man who takes bribes overthrows it. Someone who, whose principles blow with the wind. And we certainly see that amongst the uh, outrageous sexual anarchy of our time. Someone whose principles blow with the wind uh, bring complete instability to society. And when you're in the middle of winds that are blowing, it's very important to hunker down and to remain faithful to your first principles. Christ is our stability. The prophet Isaiah says that. He says a beautiful word. He says, the Lord is the stability of our times. The Lord is the stability of our times. I think it's in the 30th chapter of Isaiah's prophecy. Uh, that was the case 600 years before Christ, and it's certainly the case now. Remain affixed to him, dear ones, and you will be stable and you will stand upright. God be with you. Patristic Nectar Publications presents A Heart for God, lectures on the life of the holy prophet and King David. Christians are indebted to no one in the Old Testament more than the holy prophet and king, David. He alone, amongst all the believers in the ancient covenant, is described by the Lord as having a heart for God. David's sin, an infamy second only to that of Adam, has been meditated upon by believers, as has David's deep repentance, which has provided an image for countless penitents to imitate over the centuries in order to find peace with God. In these 10 lectures, Father Josiah surveys the entire life of King David, from his early rise as a humble shepherd, to his years in hiding from Saul, to the magnificent covenant that God cut with him, 